So we're on page four of 7.1. Looks like this. It says find the sum of the measures of the interior angles of the indicated polygon. The sum means what they all add up to. So how do I find what all of the inside angles add up to? N minus 2 times 180. And then N represents the number of sides. So we have a dodecagon. How many sides does that have? 12. 12 minus 2 is 10 times 180. 1,800 degrees. Right, so you don't divide it up or anything. You just use the formula to find the sum. That means what all of them add up to. In the second question, you're going to do the opposite. You're given the sum, and now we need to figure out what the polygon was. Okay, so um, you can do this in your head, or you can set this equal to the formula. Because this formula... Um, depending on what the n is, what the number of sides is, would give you 1260. So what is the first thing I want to do? Divide by 180. All right, what is 1260 divided by 180? 7. Or page 4, I guess there is no page. All right, so then what's my next step? Add 2 to get the number of sides by itself. So n equals 9. But remember that it says classify the polygon. So n just represents the number of sides. So from here we've got to make sure we classify. So what is a 9-sided polygon? A nonagon. Nonagon. Perfect. All right, we got one more, and it's this beautiful picture. Um, I think we did some like it yesterday. You are going to do some like this on your classwork, but in your textbook, these X's won't be here. You would have to solve, okay? But you can fill them in yourself. Like, you can write in an X and an X and solve from there. Because they both represent the same number, you can call them both X. So the first thing we need to know um, how many degrees fit inside of this shape? How many sides are there? Five. So if you don't know off the bat how many degrees it adds up to, what do we have to use? The n minus 2 times 180. So 5 minus 2 times 180. 5 minus 2 is? 3 times 180. 540. So that means all five of these angles add up to 540 degrees. So 90 plus x plus 100 plus 70 plus x equals 540. All right, so let us combine like terms. So 90, 100, and 70. 260. X plus X. 2X. All right, and then my last step. Well, no, it's not my last, but we're getting there. What do we do next? Subtract. Subtract 260, both sides. So that makes 280. Good. Now my last step is to divide by 2. And x equals 140. Good. So that's it for 7.1. Um, you can go ahead and take out the 7.2 notes. Today we're going to do 7.2 notes, and then we're going to do a textbook assignment. Um, and I'll walk around and put check marks on your paper just to ensure you're doing things correctly. So we're going to talk about parallelograms. 7.2, properties of parallelograms. There are four of them, and they're on your paper listed. One, two, three, four. Make sure your phone is on silent. 
You do need to memorize these four properties. They're pretty simple to memorize, but you do want to make sure you know them um, for your quiz and your test. Uh, does anybody know like what a famous parallelogram is? Famous. You see them all the time? There's actually two types, three types. Let's see if you can guess after we learn what they are. Um, properties of parallelograms, this is not on your paper, but I am going to have you write something down. Um, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. So in this diagram, PQ is parallel to RS. How do I already know that by the picture? The little triangles. Do these triangles mean they're the same length? They do not. It just means they're parallel to each other. And then QR and PS are parallel as well. They have two sets of triangles. So what I want you to write, you see at the top where it says 7.2 properties of parallelograms, just under the word parallelogram, uh, parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. So a parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. Two pairs of parallel sides. So at this point, can you think of a quadrilateral that is a parallelogram that has two pairs of parallel sides? A rhombus is one of them. A rectangle is another. And a square is the other one. So they're all types of parallelograms. They have two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, so we're going to talk about the four properties that all of those have. So think about like you guys learn in biology about like animals. Did you already do that? Like the animal kingdom? You're doing it now? You're doing it now. Okay, so we'll talk about it in a little bit. But a square is a type of quadrilateral and a type of parallelogram. Does that make sense? It's all of the above. Um, and we'll talk more about that, I think, on Monday um, when we go over the properties. But nonetheless, parallelograms have four properties. Okay? The first one is that opposite sides are congruent and parallel. So you're going to put this in the first blank, the number one. Opposite sides are congruent and parallel. Congruent and parallel. This is true for all types of parallelograms, including a rhombus, a rectangle, and a square. So opposite sides congruent and parallel. Opposite angles are congruent. Case number two. So opposite sides are congruent and parallel. And then opposite angles are congruent. Okay. Um, and then if they're not opposite, then they are called consecutive angles. And consecutive angles are supplementary. And we'll pause here for a second. So opposite sides congruent and parallel, opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary. So we're going to pick a number and show you what that looks like here. So pick a number, any number between 1 and 180, preferably an easy one. 75. 75. So let's say angle A was 75 degrees. You have enough information to figure out all of the other angles in this parallelogram. Because A is 75 degrees, we know opposite angles are congruent. So what is opposite of angle A? Angle C, so it would also be 75 degrees. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Consecutive means they're next to each other, like on the same side. So that means A and B are consecutive, B and C, C and D, D and A, they're all consecutive. So to find angle B, all you would do is 180 minus 75, which is 105. So again, if B is 105, then D is 105. So the angles next to each other need to add up to 180, okay, no matter where you look at it. And then the angles opposite of each other are congruent. Okay, so those are your angles. And then last, deal with diagonals. Diagonals bisect each other. Diagonals bisect each other. So let's say you have this picture and you had LJ is, the length is 10. 
So you would be able to find the two pieces because these two diagonals cut each other in half. So this piece is congruent to this one, and this piece is congruent to this one because they've been cut in half. So what would the length of BL be? Five. And JB would be? Five. And MB would be? Seven, because the full length is 14. So that means BK would be? Seven. Okay, so that's what we're talking about when they've been bisected. Okay, so the two halves equal. So we're going to use those properties in the bottom four below. Um, I left the properties down here, but you also have them to refer to at the top of your paper. Okay, so number one, we have X and Y. Would we like to solve for X or Y first? X. Is it um, a side, an angle, or a diagonal? It is a side. So we know opposite sides are congruent. They're also kind of long, you know. But opposite sides are congruent is important because what is x plus 3 going to equal? 17. 17. So that means x equals 14. We're going to subtract. It's all good. All right, and then y minus 2 is a side, an angle, or a diagonal. It's a side again, so it's going to be congruent to the side it's opposite to. So y minus 2 equals 38. So y equals 40. Number two, do we want to find A or B first? A. Is it a side, an angle, or a diagonal? It is a side, so again, we know the sides opposite of each other are congruent. Subtract 5, and what is A equal? 10. All right, then we can look at B. Is it a side, an angle, or a diagonal? It is an angle. So we're given 3B degrees, and we're given 111. So we need to decide if they're opposite or consecutive. They are opposite, which means that they are congruent. So 3B equals 111. I know it looks like they shouldn't be divisible, but what's 1 plus 1 plus 1? 3. So 3 is divisible by 3, so 111 is divisible by 3. Just doesn't look like it should be. So we get 37. If you think this is going to get more complicated, I mean, we just keep using these four properties. So, you know, that's it. So, number three, do we want to find U or V? U. U. Okay, uh, is it a side, an angle, or a diagonal? It is an angle. So, the other angle that was given to us is 124. We need to decide if they are opposite or if they're consecutive. Opposite, which means that they're going to be congruent. 2U equals 124, so u equals 62. To find v, is it a side, an angle, or a diagonal? It is an angle. Um, we were given 124, so are they opposite angles or are they consecutive? consecutive? Consecutive, which means that they are supplementary. So you can do one of two things. If you don't really feel like thinking and just being like systematic, you can take them, 124 plus V minus 3, and they'll equal 180. That's option one. Does anybody know option two? Subtract 124 from 180, which means V minus 3 equals 56, and then you would solve that. Add 3 and V equals 59. You'll get the same thing if you did this longer way. You would combine like terms. You get 121 plus V equals 180. Subtract 121. V still equals 59. So this way, you're just going to have a bigger number to deal with than this one. And then number four, do we want to find S or T? S. S, is it a side, an angle, or a diagonal? It is a diagonal. Um, so, what do we know 3s is going to equal? 27. Because the diagonal has been bisected, right, so it's been cut in half. This is the halfway point, which means, you know, 27 equals 
3s, so s equals 9. And then the same thing with t plus 5 and 19. t plus 5 will equal 19, which means t equals 14. Good. Go ahead and flip. I'm asking you to do um, the first and the last on this page. So you're going to do this question and then this question, and then we'll check it together. I think we're ready, right? Um, so x, is it a side, an angle, or a diagonal? To side, so it equaled, right? So what do we get for x? We're on the one on the top. You know, the, the, the one at the top of the page. Yes, OK. <laughs> All right, and then y, is it a side, an angle, or a diagonal? It is an angle. They gave you the opposite angle, which means that they are equal to each other, congruent. Now at the bottom, x, is this a side, an angle, or a diagonal? It is an angle. They gave you 54, you know, which is... So they're equal, divided by 2, and x does equal 27. Okay. And then uh, 3y minus 1, side, angle, or diagonal? Side, it's equal to the one across from it. Add 1, you get 21, divide by 3, and we get 7. Good. All right, so as shown, part of the extending arm of a desk lamp is a parallelogram. The angles of the parallelogram change as the lamp is raised and lowered. Um, find the measure of B, C, D. So B, C, D. What is the vertex of B, C, D? C. So we want to find this angle. Um, when we are given the measure of angle A, D, C, which is this one, and it is 110. So are these, and if you don't like, you know, looking at it that way, this is 110, and then we don't know this one. Are they opposite or are they consecutive? Consecutive. consecutive. So that means that they are, they add up to 180, yeah. They're supplementary. So 180 minus 110 gives me 70 degrees. It's okay. 70. When you're ready, you can turn the page. So you will have a question like, you'll have five questions like this, meaning there's a diagram and you'll have five things to fill in about it. Okay, so keep that in mind on your quiz. It says, find the indicated measure in, you see that symbol? You can just take a guess what it means. It's a parallelogram. So even though it doesn't have markings that these are parallel, it doesn't need it, it, it names it like that. It'd be like saying triangle, blah, blah. Like, okay. So we have a parallelogram. Um, it says explain your reasoning. I, we're not necessarily going to do that in this one because it's, you would just be saying opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary. It, you know, it's just, we don't need it. You are going to explain on one of them, and I'll show you why. All right, so we're going to start with PO. Is it a side, an angle, or a diagonal? 
It is a side, so it's going to be congruent to the opposite side, which is 24. All right, then we've got OQ. Oh, right. Oh, yep. OQ, is it a side, an angle, or a diagonal? It is a diagonal. So it is going to be 14. It's going to be congruent to MQ. So that reason you would say diagonals place like each other if you were writing the reason. Um, the length of NO, is it a side, an angle, or a diagonal? It's a side, it's congruent to the side opposite, so it is 26. All right, PQ, is it a side, an angle, or a diagonal? Diagonal, so it is 20.7. Good. Good, good. Now we're going to find angles. Um, let's talk about the angles that we do have. Uh, we've got this 59 and then we've got this 68. So is the 68 pointing to the right portion or is it pointing to the whole angle? It is the whole angle. So keep that in mind. It is literally saying that this angle is 68 degrees. The reason I drew this down here is because if we know 68, we know a lot of different things. What angle, this is N and M and P and O. What angle do we also know? P is also 68. Um, what is M going to be? 112. So I'll tell you what 59 represents, which means O is also 112. Okay. Um, 59 do you, is, represents this left portion. So this one represented the whole angle. 68 represented the whole angle because it had that arc showing the whole angle. But 58 or 59 is like in a corner, shoved in a corner. Um, so the most common mistake I see people make, they're like, oh, well, if this is 59, then this side is 59. But is 59 plus 59, 112? It's not. So it's not in half, just keep that in mind, okay? Um, so let's start, we'll find the measure of P, M, N, so let's see where that is. P, M, N, um, the vertex would be M, the middle letter, so we already found that. What is the measure of P, M, N? 112, because these two are supplementary to each other, so 180 minus 68 is 112. All right, then N-O-P, N-O-P is this whole angle, O is the vertex, so it measures 112 also, N-O-P. O-P-M, let me erase some so we can look at stuff. O-P-M is this whole angle, so it is 68 also. And then last, we've got N, M, O, which is this angle. Does anybody know what it is? It is 59. I'll show you why. This is the one I want you to write a reason for. So this is a parallelogram, right? So that means MN is parallel to PO. If I could draw a triangle. These two are parallel, and you've got a line touching two parallel lines. What did we call a line that crossed two lines? A transversal. So if you look, this is 59, right? It's inside of the double lines. So inside of the double lines. And on the left side of the transversal. This angle is between the double lines and on the right side of the transversal. So what do we call those types of angles? Alternate, alternate interior. So I want you to write because alternate interior angles are congruent. I know I barely have room. I'm sure you have more. Um, but because alternate interior angles are congruent. 
Okay, you will have a section like this on your quiz. It is 15 questions. Um, this one, it has five questions, so to speak. Okay, so what you're going to do is take out a sheet of paper.